The World Conference on Distance Education, then called Correspondence Education, started in British Columbia in Canada in 1938. The 1995 World Conference was the first to be hosted by the United Kingdom Open University. Over a thousand delegates from 79 countries, a record number, converged on Birmingham last June. A gloriously sunny week was spent at the International Convention Center. But how do they find someone to take on the overall planning for such a vast event? Well, the first thing to do is to get somebody to uh, take a responsibility for it. And the easiest way to do that is to find somebody who's had a little bit too much to drink in a pub one night, about two years before you start these sort of conferences, and uh, praise them and stroke them down a little bit and say, you're just the sort of person to run this conference. It's happened to me a couple of times in my life, and you won't find me in a pub tonight. Well, we had about 500 contributions initially. Um, those were abstracts. And then those got down to, say, about 350 or so papers. And I think we've got uh, 270 plus in the two conference books. So that process began, we got the abstracts about a year ago. We got the papers. Um, I said they had to be in by December. Of course, they weren't. Um, and so we've been working on that. We started about 18 months ago. I mean, we knew three years ago that uh, the, uh, com the next conference would be here in the UK and in Birmingham and uh, we started preparations about 18 months ago. It's got faster and faster as we've got closer and closer and really the last month has been the most intensive period. What kind of things are you doing for the delegates? Well, we're trying to make it as interesting as we can for them as possible. We've got obviously got a, a, a fantastic venue for the uh, conference in the International Conference Centre. Uh, we're running trips to Ox the Oxford Regional Centre, uh, to Walton Hall, because many of the delegates will see the OU really as, the, if you like, the mother of open universities. And the opportunity to visit uh, the central campus at Milton Keynes we felt was very important for them. One of the most exciting areas of the world in open and distance learning is the Far East and Australasia. In, in fact, Hong Kong reflects the Far East generally. It's a vibrant, it's an exciting, it's an aggressive, and if I may say, an always upwardly mobile society. It's also a society that is constantly shifting its economic base. That would mean people are retraining, reskilling, re-educating, reorganizing their, their lives. Uh, to, to exploit newer opportunities. Given that, uh, they would see learning and investment in learning as a major uh, uh, consideration. And it's for this reason, when, when, when a society itself is in such flux uh, and, 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 and mobility, uh, learning has to be wrapped around their lifestyles, the lifestyles of an individual. And distance learning, open education with its flexibility, with its uh, learner-centeredness is, is ideal. And uh, one should not be surprised that uh, distance education has become a very successful vehicle, uh, both in terms of individual agenda and national agendas. Well, distance education in Australia is used at all levels, both at school level and technical and further education, higher education especially, and also in industrial training. And uh, each state tends to do things a little differently. Just about everything in Australia is sort of state-based. Um, and there's such a diversity there that it's impossible to have one model, whereas in the Open University of the United Kingdom, you tend to have a standard approach by one institution. In Australia, you have a huge diversity of approaches. Europe is still wrestling with issues of technology and access. It's definitely on the agenda, but it's quite obvious that many countries in Europe do not have the equipment that is needed to sort of be part of the information highway. And that is, that is the post-communist countries as well as other countries in Europe. Where I come from, in Norway, for example, we can't, can't count on our students having a computer yet. Not all of them, very few actually. The old vision is that you need to reach out to those who don't have the, uh, the opportunity. But I think that is changing because the people do have opportunities now. So we're moving into a competitive society more and more. And I, I need this conference also to clear, to clear a new vision. <laughs> Another region of the world for major development is Africa. 
It's important because the government itself has realized that uh, we don't have resources to build more buildings and mortar to accommodate all the needs in the country and they've identified distant education as one way of meeting the needs of the country. And it is the most uh, cost effective way. The University of South Africa is the first in the world to go distant already 50 years ago, 1946. And, uh, of course, other universities started later that is, uh, to follow this route of distance education. In the last uh, 20 years, I would say that distance education has expanded greatly in Kenya. Uh, we now not offer only distance education as part of a continuing education program in some institutions, but also have our first external degree being offered by the University of Nairobi from the Kikuyu campus, from the College of Education and External Studies. Uh, some of the programs that we give uh, are, for example, the Kenya Institute of Special Education offers a one-year distance education program to all primary school teachers who would like to be aware of the special needs of children and how to cope with children who have special needs and that would go from children with physical disabilities, um, behavioral problems, to the gifted child. And this is a very popular program. And they're now developing a course that is three years, which will offer a diploma in special education, where the teacher can opt to specialize in the visually handicapped, the hearing impaired, or the um, mentally retarded, or the learning disabilities. There's a lot of support from Britain for these programs. The ODA is supporting a number of universities uh, in training writers and also with computers, desktop publishing and library resources. And this has been very helpful. I myself have been involved in training the writers. And in the last few months, I've trained 55 writers for the first external B.Ed. degree at the University of Cape Coast. Well, the needs are for um, teacher training, teachers actually, because there is a dearth of teachers now, especially in primary education. We are trying both to upgrade them and to increase the number. And we have found out that the, the fastest way in which we can increase the number is by do, using distance education, especially because teachers can study while they are still working in schools, there won't be any disruption and so on and so forth. You know, we have a dual mode program, we have, which means that we have um, the, the, the same course that is being run by the University of College of Education in Winneba, by that is being done by the internal students, is also being done ex by the external students, by the distance education students. So we have a temporary problem of getting the lecturers to write the courses, and we really want the lecturers to write the courses because they teach the internal courses. If you can imagine a situation whereby the lecturer has to write the distance education courses in addition to his full-time course, albeit he's going to receive some pay, it is a very demanding um, job. So we are hoping, in any case, I am very sure, I'm very positive because they are very determined, you know, I'm very sure that we'll, the, the program will start in October. The World Conference provides a forum for meetings of regional and world networks. Eden is a, a name for the European Distance Education Network. We found just a fine acronym. And uh, it's a fairly recent organization uh, established in 1991 uh, after the, the demolishing of the Iron Curtain and the, the communist systems. So we, we tried to uh, establish a network that could uh, incorporate distance educators in Western Europe and in Eastern and Central Europe. Uh, and when we did that, we also um, saw that uh, the situation in Western Europe was quite fragmented. There were different environments for distance education, different types of institutions. So we have tried to build a, a really a broad platform that could incorporate everybody who is interested in open and distance learning in the whole of Europe. The Commonwealth of Learning has been set up by 51 heads of governments of Commonwealth to bring the best in education opportunities uh, of the Commonwealth to the Commonwealth. Uh, they saw distance education 
as a, an exciting vehicle to provide some answers to access or enhancing access. And uh, the mission itself then begins to unfold to, to, to provide individuals in the Commonwealth access to knowledge of the Commonwealth in whatever form that access is available. That should be the mission. I think the ICD has lots of possibilities to going, of going very far. Uh, first, it will become much more of a political organization than a professional organization. Because institutions will have their own agendas and there will be uh, an umbrella agenda for all the institutions and operators in distance education and training fields. And it will mean to improve conditions for learning and training uh, for all, everywhere and lifelong. It is a huge task to provide all those people with the qualifications they need and for that we have to adopt new methods, new technologies, but uh, more than that an integrated approach to education and learning. That's what I believe it will happen in the next few years. I, I believe that cultural difference will be rather an asset than a drawback. I believe that uh, people will take for granted now that we have to become multicultural and more open than we were uh, before, uh, as well as in cultural habits, as in languages or in modus operandi for doing business or for negotiating or whatever. Globalization means all those things and you cannot hope for homogenization of cultures but rather to differentiation. One thing we hope is that um, we'll have in the future um, more simplified technologies that can combine in some way all the multimedia uh, discourses and that and, and a relatively inexpensive price. Um, the, the Women's Network was established in, in 1982 to give a forum for all the women around the world in, in international distance ed to uh, discuss common concerns, to have a safe place to talk, to be heard, because you know we know the research evidence says that in many forums women tend not to get listened to as clearly. So we've we've been very active uh, since 1982 in developing their voices. Uh, it enabled a lot of women around the world to meet each other. So I would say on the whole we had an excellent start and now we have to regroup and say where are we going into this new technological era and into very new environments for teaching and learning. There are a lot of assumptions made about how technology will uh, increase access to people but of course we all know that, that in, in domestic technology as Jill Kirkup says men uh, make a lot of the decisions so the issue is how does a woman get access to technology in her home and secondly does she really want to do that or does she really want to get away from the house and get some peace and quiet and meet her, her um, peers somewhere else. The second, ax there's the second problem with technology is um, having it working as an environment that is uh, appropriate for reflective tentative kind of thinking. We use the phrase of the electronic highway but, but I'm hearing people now refer to it as the testosterone highway um, and I have experience of people who um, are living under cognitive steroids. They, they surf around on the internet and you know how athletes have steroids? Well I've coined the phrase a cognitive steroid. They think they're all powerful but in fact what they may be getting is bits and pieces of information and nothing really carefully structured as in a book. The third aspect, um, the concern for us with technology, and particularly for women, is um, the, the, the whole issue of teaching models and, and learning strategies. Uh, a lot of us grew up in the delivery model of technology. The professor knew everything and the technology was lecturing to deliver. Well, people like me and are saying, delivery is okay, but we have to get the students dialoguing. So how do we use the new communications technologies to allow people to talk with each other, not past each other? But what do conference participants gain from the event? One of the interesting things is that we get to meet other people from Africa. Hmm? 
and the developing world much more easily than we do across Africa because uh, quite often people uh, that have, we have been working with and organizing the programs for and developing programs for in Africa help us to get to the conference. And uh, when we're here, we can share problems, we can share ideas, and we can try to uh, give each other solutions to some of the common problems. I think the priorities are to find a system that is flexible enough to uh, uh, allow people to move between institutions to articulate. In the past, we had very rigid regulations and rules between institutions, and we are trying to open this up between colleges, uh, universities, private as well as the uh, public institutions to make it possible for people to move in and out of the system. It was very important for me to be here, to meet people, to make new friendships and to see what is on offer and what it is that we can learn. There's so much that we can learn, especially because we have been cut off during the uh, sanction period. Various parts of the world use the conference to promote themselves. We modelled the CD on a postcard, so it's possible to click on one of the states and then to uh, open up the CD where we would have each of the universities represented. They are listed around here. And uh, we provided enough copies so that each delegate was provided with one of the CDs in the actual uh, conference satchel. So it's a contribution to networking in distance education. But why have a conference at all for people who specialise in distance? Why not do it by internet? When you're going through the internet, you have to know to a certain extent what you're looking for. Here, you can just meet somebody and think to yourself, wow, they're doing that, are they? Uh, we're trying to do that. Let's go and have a word with them and see what, they, you know, what they've been doing so that we can um, listen to them. Uh, so it, it's meeting people. And um, I'm not anti techie and I'm not a Luddite but and I use the internet quite extensively but there's nothing like I mean I am a person there's nothing like meeting people and there's nothing like picking up just the sort of the little bits and snippets of conversation over breakfast in the morning that'll lead you on to something else and that's what it's all about really. You make a, a whole network of friends, of colleagues, people that you're in touch with for the next three or four years. I've met people that I haven't seen for ten years this week uh, and we're immediately on to a new wavelength talking about oh, how have you moved ahead on this or that or the other. We found that there was an enormous amount of knowledge. It doesn't matter the actual critical mass, the number of students and so on. It matters the intelligence. How have you actually operated? Uh, what are you doing for remote students? How are you coping with particular needs in particular areas or particular types of the curriculum or new technology? Now there are always things to learn everywhere. And this is the very first time that people have been able to come and say, we want to spend a whole week learning also about how the University of the United Kingdom has got on. And we've been able to actually push the boat out and say, well, this is, this is where we're at. Uh, what do you think of that? And so we've actually been more forthcoming perhaps this time. And that is this motion horizontally when you... Alongside the conference was the Open Learning Exhibition. Over 2,600 trainers and managers came from the Midlands to visit. I never cease to be amazed at the diversity of initiatives, the ingenuity, the innovation that's constantly coming up of uh, open learning projects in England, in Ireland, Wales, Scotland, that beyond belief the number of things that they're doing. Uh, libraries increasingly are involved in open learning and uh, small medium-sized enterprises involved in open learning through our members very, very successfully. I think it's an uh, absolutely critical issue that we're sharing with the rest of the conference that the new technology now could go into quite fundamentally different directions. It could be very divisive for the elite, for the wealthy, for the techno-freaks and the well-heeled in various ways, well-supported, and very little for the rest. Or with the principles that were the founding principles of the Open University and are shared by so many institutions in open and distance learning elsewhere, it could be something that we drive forward as a mass universal access issue. And that's going to be very important. How does the workstation of the future become something that can be there for individuals, whether in their homes, in the community, in their workplaces, and genuinely accessible? And so the superhighway has got to be everybody's highway.
in Eastern and Central Europe is, of course, because of this transition, uh, they also need to, uh, to change their uh, system education. Historically, in Eastern and Central Europe, they were having a lot of correspondence education. Almost 40% of all the students studied by correspondence. But this, compared to modern uh, insights, is very outdated, very much outdated. It was conceived in the, in the 30s and has never changed. So it has to be updated and uh, make ready for the present demands of the present and changing society in that part of the world. Well, I work in distance education provisioning in South Africa. I um, work for an NGO and we're involved in radio learning. And uh, distance education in our situation is obviously going to be the key means of redressing the imbalances in our educational situation in South Africa. So, you know, this is a great forum to meet you know, different people from different countries with, involved in very similar sort of objectives as we are. We chose radio because we think at first it offers maximum access uh, to education. Access so far has been a cliche in South Africa, we think, um, but given the remoteness of a number of communities and uh, given um, just the huge distances that have to be covered, we think that radio is the easiest means of, of getting high quality educational instructional materials into classrooms, regardless of where they might be. For the 1995 conference, one of the abiding memories will be the sense of liberation in different parts of the world, with distance education as a key instrument. I'm extremely optimistic about South Africa. I think South Africa is one of the, the miracles of, of this century, uh, and it's wonderful to see South Africa change in the 20th century, not the 21st. So I am extremely optimistic. But you know, I think throughout South Africa, there's a great sense of well-being and. and optimism. Oh, I'm here because I have made a lot of contact, I am networking, and I am very sure that I've learned so many new things. I mean, I've heard about um, information superhighway after being away from England for one year. You know, I, I want to be familiar with a lot of the jargons. I want to come back into mainstream. I've, I've updated myself on what is happening elsewhere, and I feel very privileged to be attending a course, a conference that comprises over 1,000 people from 79 countries. It's a big, big thing for me. And the amount of information I've gained from colleagues in other institutions, I mean, I've shared information and I've learned a lot. And I, and I think it is just a great event.